Hi, this is lesson 9.5, Calculus of Vector Valued Functions. This will bring us to the end of the videos, regular videos for BC Calculus. Woo! Here we go. Position vector. And so what we're doing is we're taking vector value functions and we're going to apply the calculus to them. So first of all, we need to start off with how do we define the position function? What we're going to use our brackets for vectors. And we got x of t and y of t. And so this is our location of the object at any time. So this is very much like parametric. Then our speed we can find by finding the magnitude of the velocity function. And the magnitude of the velocity function can be found by taking square root of the derivative of each of the respective functions, quantity squared. Now remember, speed is usually the absolute value of the uh, velocity function, but we're going to have velocity in x direction and y direction. To put it all in one package, we could do this right here, and doing squared plus squared and square root will still end up with a positive value. I hope you can see that. Okay? Then the velocity vector is going to be this right here. I guess I should have gone down first. So then speed comes from the velocity vector. Acceleration vector, vector is just going to be similar type thing. Second derivative of each one of those pieces. Okay, then the distance traveled. So this is going to be a little bit different, but if you think about distance traveled and arc length, oh, I think that those are pretty similar in nature. So we had an arc length defined for parametric equations which was a to b of the square root of x prime of t quantity squared plus y prime of t. We use different notation for when we use this for parametrics, but it would be pretty much the same for our vector valued functions. And then when is our particle or whatever we're dealing with, I'm sorry, the vector, when are we at rest for this object that we're dealing with? So it would be when both the x and y are both at zero. Both of them have to be at zero to sort this out. And these were magnitude bars on the side there, if you couldn't read what I did before. So example number one. We're going to give you a vector that's defined for x and for y of t. And for this particle moving in the xy plane, find the following. Now, first of all, when we do this, you might say, oh, this is a lot like our parametric equations. Yes, it is. It's very similar. So you've got to look at the similarities, and there are some different nuances that we'll see. So for part A, graph the path of the particle on the interval from 0 to 2. Well, if I plug in 0 for both the x and the y, I'm going to get 0, 4. If I plug in 1... I'm going to get the point 3, 2. And if I plug in 2, what happens when I get in 2? I see a 12 and I see a, I see a 12, 0. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to go to here. And then there's my direction. Starting point and my direction. Then for part B, they ask us for the velocity vector. Well, that's just taking the derivative of each one of those parts, and so I'm going to get 6t, comma, 3t squared minus 6t. That would be your velocity vector. And I can write this v of t equals. And then they want the velocity at time 1. So I'm going to get 6, comma, that's a t. So it's going to be 3 minus 6, negative 3. The speed at time 1 is going to be, we can write this like this. We said that this is the magnitude of the velocity at this time. It's just going to be 
6 squared plus negative 3 squared, which is the square root of 45. I think you can simplify that to 3 squared of 5. Part D asks for the distance traveled. So this is very similar to the arc length of the parametric. So if I do the distance traveled equal to the square root, and it's going to be my x velocity. It's a definite integral. Let me put that in there first, 0 to 3. And so it's going to be my x quantity squared dx dt, or x prime, and then my y of t prime, 3t squared minus 6t quantity squared, and that's all dt. And this would be 28583. Part E, when is the particle at rest? So if I come down here, the particle at rest is when the velocity is equal to 0 on both components. So if I solve these out, t equal to 0, and this one would be t equal to, factor that, I get 0 and 2. Notice that these two are the same. So it's going to be an ultimate answer of t equal to 0. Both of them have to be 0. This just means that the y's are uh, stopped momentarily at 0 and at 2. And so both x and y would be just stopped at t equal to 0. The acceleration vector, you should try this, you should pause this and do that, but pretty straightforward. Just take the derivative of the velocity vector, and then we're going to get 6t minus 6. So let's tell the world that that's a of t, and then it says I want this at time 2. So a of 2 is going to be 6, and then 6. The direction of the particle at time 1 and at time 2. So I need my, this is my uh, value of my, ve uh, this is my vector right here. And so I need the, for the direction I need where I am. So the position S sub 1 is just going to be 3 comma, if I plug in the 1, I already did that before, that would be 2 by plugging into this right here. And S of 2 is just going to be doing the same thing, 12, 0. Now I can find theta. Theta is equal to the inverse tangent. And both of these are in the first quadrant, so I don't have to worry about monkeying around with this after I've typed it into the calculator. And I'm going to get 0.588. And then for this one, this is going to be the inverse tangent of... 0, and that would just be 0. So these are all quick examples of the formulas I put up above. Example 2 brings it up to a little bit higher level, but it should be similar to what we've done with particle problems many times. So I'm giving you the acceleration function, which is negative 2 cosine of t, comma, negative 3 sine of t. At time equal to 0, its velocity curve is 0, 3. Well, this looks like some sort of particular solution. And its position vector is s of 0 is equal to 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. So find the velocity vector when t is equal to pi over 4. So this would be a particular solution type problem. So I got v of t is equal to, I need the antiderivative of this piece, which is just going to be negative 2 sine of t. And we're going to have lots of c's flying around here, so we'll do plus c1. And then the antiderivative of negative 3 sine of t, 3 cosine of t plus c2. Those are both the antiderivative forms of that. And so now I have this particular solution, and I can go ahead and find out what c is for each one of these respective pieces. So if I take and I plug in my values here, this would be a 0 that I'm plugging in, and this would be a 0 I'm plugging in, because v of 0 is equal to 0, 3, so 
this now becomes C1 is equal to 0, and here is C2. This would be 3 equal to 3, so C2 would also be equal to 0. So here's my velocity vector. Then it does ask me what happens when t is equal to pi over 4. So let's plug that in. And so I'm going to get negative 2 sine of pi over 4, 3 cosine of pi over 4. Those are both just square root of 2 over 2. So the velocity at pi over 4 would be this right here for each one of the components. Now part b says I want the position vector when t is equal to pi over 4. You try this because this is the same process we just did, but now here is my position at time equal to 0. Pause and try it. So if I split these up into individual components, x and y, that helps me out a little bit, but I still end up with s of t is equal to 2 cosine of t, comma, and then over here, I'm going to end up with 3 sine of t plus square root of 2 over 2. There we go. And now s of pi over 4, which they're asking us for, put in pi over 4, I'm going to get square root of 2 over 2 again. So I'm going to get 2 times that. So it's just going to be square root of 2. I'm going to get 3 times that, which would be 3 square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. So that would give me 4 square roots of 2 over 2. I believe that's what we end up with. So here's my final answer right here. Okay? All right, moving on. Part C says I want the speed when t is equal to pi over 4. I'm going to be using this velocity here at time uh, or at uh, pi over 4. And so I set up my speed. And that's just going to be the square root of negative square root of 2 quantity squared plus 3 over the square root of 2, which is the same thing as 3 square root of 2 over 2 quantity squared. And if I work that one out, I'm going to get square root of 2 plus 9 halves, and then that's just 4 plus 9, 13 over square root of 2. You can put that in your calculator if you wish. Then part D, the times when the particle is at rest. I want to find when the velocities are equal to zero. So, I'm sorry, this one up here, negative 2 sine of t equal to zero and 3 cosine of t equal to zero. Well, both of these say, well, sine of t is equal to zero, cosine of t is equal to zero. When does that happen at the same time? Never. Sine equals zero, cosine equal to zero doesn't happen at the same time. So then the direction of the particle when t is equal to pi over 4, we have to go to the position function. And the position function at pi over 4 gives me this point right here. So if I want to deal with this, this would be inverse tangent of 2 square root of 2 all over square root of 2, which equals inverse tangent of 2. You can punch that into the calculator yourself. You're going to get 1.107. That would be in radians. Okay, then lastly, we have the distance traveled. So total distance is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 of my pieces of my velocity function, quantity squared. So this would be negative 2 sine of t quantity squared plus 3 cosine of t quantity squared. And let's not forget our dt. And then this is going to be equal to 4.856. That would be your total distance traveled from time equal to 0 to time equal to 2. All right, there we go. We got it all wrapped up. Thanks. I hope you've been enjoying these videos, and I really appreciate you listening. I hope it's helped you through your paths in this course. Take care, and have a great day.